Off The Grid has been getting a lot of attention lately due to the fact that they're clearly paying a lot of big streamers to try the game. They even gave Ninja an exclusive bundle which actually looks pretty good, but the game has been met with a lot of skepticism because of its use of the blockchain technology and NFTs, and this has led to some wild conspiracy theories about the game being a crypto rug pull or having a secret crypto miner running in the background. So today we're going to be getting into what's good about the game, what its main problems are, and I'm no crypto expert, but I have run Ethereum miners on my computer as well as a dedicated mining rig, so I'll give my thoughts on the entire crypto situation as well. Right off the bat, the game has amazing intro cinematics that really establish the theme of the game and the universe that it takes place in. Nothing here feels cheap and rushed. In fact, these are some of the better intro cutscenes that I've seen no pun intended, and for a free game it feels premium right off the rip. Then you get into some character customization and land on the main menu. This is where the confusion begins. When you first start out you have almost nothing on your account, there's no tutorial mode and no explanation of what you're supposed to do. You're left with just saying f it and dropping it into trios which is the only game mode available right now. I think at the very least they could have given us a solos game mode to drop in and figure things out without affecting other teammates. I don't know about you guys but I feel bad when I'm off in a corner meandering around trying to figure out the game and get my settings dialed in and my teammates are going like what's this guy doing and that's exactly how you can expect your first five to ten matches to go nothing in this game is explained and like i said there's no tutorial mode i didn't want to watch a bunch of youtube videos before playing it because i wanted this video to be 100 my own thoughts and experience but if you want to give this game a try i recommend watching my beginner's guide after this it'll be on screen at the end of the video and in the description as well when you drop in for the first time you'll find yourself wandering around the map opening as many loop ins as you can and staring at the ground trying to figure out what anything is or what it does the perks or cyber limbs are more obvious as to what they do, but there's no indication as to what weapons are good or bad besides the rarity color, which as a mechanic is just plain stupid in my opinion. It adds way too much hidden RNG to the game, and when I get into a gunfight, there's no way I can possibly know how powerful an enemy's weapon is and act accordingly. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like having a rare weapon is quite a big advantage compared to just a basic white weapon, and I understand that's in games like Fortnite, but it feels almost impossible to win a gunfight with just a basic weapon. Again, I don't know, none of this is explained anywhere in the game, I have no idea if the more rare weapons just have more attachments, or if they actually do more damage. You'll also have the sense that you're not entirely sure what's going on at any given moment. My biggest issue is that there's not a lot of feedback given to the player about what's happening. The damage direction indicator isn't very good or helpful, and the audio is okay at best. In my experience, enemy teams will just pop up out of nowhere with no indication and delete you. In every single one of those instances, you have zero chance of fighting back, and you need to somehow find a way to escape. And to do that, you're going to need one of the movement ability limbs, which you won't know what they are until you play the game about 10 times. Now, let's talk about gunfights. I found the time to kill to be very confusing and inconsistent. Some of the gunfights seem to make sense where both me and the enemy have the same amount of health, and other times it felt like I got instantly deleted, or I'm just unloading on the enemy forever and not killing them. The only feedback that you get as a player is an armor crack sound and an icon that pops up on screen, very similar to how it works in Warzone. Nowhere is it explained how much base health you have or how much health each armor plate is worth, and on top of that you don't get a health bar or any damage numbers when shooting an enemy. Now you may see damage numbers popping up on screen in this gameplay but that's because I was able to dig through the game files and I found a feature for damage numbers that's not actually supposed to be in the game and I was able to turn it on by editing the config file and it's clearly unfinished but I just need something, anything to help me understand what's going on during these gunfights. And it's impossible to make informed decisions in a gunfight like knowing when to reposition or escape to heal or to stick in the gunfight because you're probably going to win it. You just kind of have to guess and hope that you're right based on whoever shot first. That's probably one of my core complaints about this game. It just doesn't give anywhere near enough feedback about what's going on at any given time. Now let's get into the performance side of the game which is probably the biggest complaint and rightfully so. This may be the worst performance I've seen in any game I've ever played. The Black Ops 6 beta was awful but by comparison it looks really good. Now keep in mind I'm playing on an EVGA 3080 with 32 gigs of RAM and a Ryzen 3700X. Not the most insane PC build but very solid. I get upwards of 150 frames per second at 1440p in every single game that I play. Running off the grid on the absolute lowest possible settings, I was only able to barely break 60 frames per second. I was actually able to go into the config files of the game and disable literally all of the lighting and shadow effects, which is why the gameplay looks like a potato. It looks like a mobile game, but that's the only way that I was able to get between 90 and 100 FPS and have the game actually run smooth enough to aim without stuttering. Also, if you can see the frame counter, it's bouncing wildly back and 
and forth by about 30 frames, which is insanely bad. Everyone assumes that this is due to poor game optimization. For sure, it's part of it, but there's another problem that I haven't seen anyone mention or even talk about. When I was running the game, I had my GPU and CPU monitor up, and I noticed that my GPU barely ever broke above 60 degrees Celsius. Now, I've played unoptimized games before, and usually my PC can still brute force decent frame rates. My GPU fans just go full throttle and the temperature jumps to like 72 or 75 degrees Celsius. So it seems like here in Off The Grid, whatever settings that they have pre-configured that are not available to us, the players, just don't utilize your hardware to the fullest extent. If I had to guess, they have some weird power throttling setting either on purpose or they just don't realize it. And the game looks nice, but it's not that graphically intensive that I can only get 50 FPS. Maybe they're trying to avoid a situation where they overdraw power on graphics cards and stop it from breaking people's devices. I can't say for sure exactly what's going on. I know for sure that this game isn't fully utilizing your hardware, which is interesting because people think that not only is the game running, but it's running a secret crypto miner in the background, but we'll get into that later. It's also possible that they have some default VRAM target usage set that's so low that it's just limiting the frame rate. And I'm kind of frustrated because there's really not a lot of settings or flexibility for players in the graphic settings. But that's enough rambling about nerdy stuff. Let's get back to the actual gameplay because despite its issues, this game does have some really good stuff in it. Now, I will give them credit here. The weapon models are fantastic. They look something kind of out of a Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4 type of a game, but with a little more detail and polish. And they fit really well within the established universe in the game, and they feel unique. I haven't had enough playtime to really understand all of the weapons, their strengths, weaknesses, or even establish some idea of a meta, so I can't really comment on it from a balance standpoint. But I will say it seems like the snipers and shotguns, surprise, surprise, completely dominate the game. But that just may be due to the fact that other players also haven't figured out what weapons are good, so they kind of default to those strong single fire weapons. The map is awesome. At the time of early access, we only have Teardrop Island where the games take place, but the map really is cool. It reminds me of a blend between the Blackout map from Black Ops 4 and, bear with me, a little bit of Night City from Cyberpunk. Lots of unique areas, and what I like the most is that it doesn't feel like you're ever trapped rotating through different points on the map. There's no chokes that when you rotate through, you know you're probably going to get held out by a team. I also really like the way they've designed the gameplay around the map. The map is huge, and each time that you drop in, you play on a limited or restricted section of the map. And this adds a little bit of variety to the gameplay, and it's something that I wish more games would do. Now, there is a lot of verticality on the map, which I do like, but it leads to massive imbalance in some gunfights. If someone's sitting up on high ground and they have a weapon like a sniper that is a first person aim down sight weapon, then there's almost nothing you can do to fight back due to the nature of third person mechanics. If you have something like a rifle, when you aim down sights with a third person weapon, it really just tightens the hip fire spread and you don't really land very many shots. And when someone is that far away or really high above you, you just can't compete. I think this game would play a lot better if they just made it so every weapon was a first person view when you aim down sights. I think the game would play better overall and it would just definitely help even out that disadvantage you have in those long range range or, you know, massive differences between high ground and low ground gunfights. Now, you're still at a disadvantage if someone's on high ground, but at least you have a chance to fight back and land some shots. If you do end up dying, the game's very forgiving because it's essentially resurgence from Warzone, where as long as one of your teammates is alive, you get to redeploy after a short period of time until the final zone. Now that we've covered the gameplay, we have to talk about the business model of the game and of course the crypto controversy. But before we do that, let me know what you guys think about the game in the comments. And if you're enjoying this video, consider subscribing because we're almost at 5,000 thousand subs. A lot of people seem very upset that the game is free to play, but they do offer a monthly subscription or premium version of the game. Subscribing to the pro or premium version gets you access to faster progression, more in-game currency, unique cosmetics, and most importantly, access to the marketplace. And this is where you can buy and sell different weapons and cosmetics. Now, I'll be honest, I don't really have any problems with this. Games have had free and paid versions going all the way back to RuneScape, where to get access to different parts of the world, you had to spend $5 per month. This is where we get into the crypto scam accusations and pay to win comments. So does upgrading to the premium version mean you automatically win? No, but it does give you access to things more quickly, but you can most definitely play this game without spending a dime and not feel like you're missing out. It'll just take you a little bit longer to collect extra hex cubes to build your loadout, but you can definitely find good enough loot around the map as long as you can stay alive for the first few minutes. And like I said previously, the most important part of getting the pro subscription is getting access to that marketplace to buy, sell, and trade items. Is this a crypto? 
crypto scam, I don't think using a blockchain and NFTs for the marketplace immediately makes it a crypto scam. You definitely don't need to use a blockchain for this type of system. CSGO has had an economy that works just fine for ages, and I don't see anybody complaining about that. I understand that people have been conditioned to fear crypto and NFTs in games, and for good reason. There have been some problems out there, but I don't think this is quite the same because this game isn't marketed as a play to earn game, nor do I see them mention the fact that it's a crypto or blockchain based game very much on their website or in their marketing at all. Let's talk about the other crypto conspiracy I've seen floating around online, and that's the idea that off the grid is just a front to deploy a crypto miner in the background while you play the game. Is that possible? Sure, but right now I don't see any evidence, nor does it make any sense to me. So you're telling me they built this entire game to mine a cryptocurrency that hasn't been named. So are they mining their own crypto? And at that point, would it just be easier to build a regular non-blockchain game to sneak a crypto miner in there under the radar? If their goal was to mine crypto, they would definitely not take the time to build a blockchain to handle the cosmetics, nor would they want to tip people off by including blockchain and NFTs. Everyone knows that consumers are already hyper skeptical of crypto in games. So why would they do that with the intent of sneaking a crypto miner into the background? It just doesn't make any sense in my opinion. Now, as a person who's run Ethereum miners on both my PC and has had a dedicated mining rig, I find it hard to believe that there's a crypto mining program running in the background at the same time as the game and my GPU temps still barely break 60 Celsius. For comparison, just Black Ops 6 alone being poorly optimized ran at 120 FPS and my GPU was around 70 degrees Celsius. So maybe you could argue that there may making sure they have enough headroom to add in a mining program in the future, but that's just a crazy accusation in my opinion. Now, what they could do is try to hook people into the game, upsell you on the pro membership, on the idea that you can play and sell your items in the marketplace to earn some money. Remember, everyone that's on the marketplace already has the pro version, so it's either going to be completely bloated with useless stuff from everyone trying to make a buck, or it actually functions as intended and allows people to just trade stuff at market prices. I also think building this entire game is just a lot of work to do a quick crypto run rug pool and leave people hanging. You'd be better off just building a random altcoin and marketing it as the next big crypto thing and then just doing a rug pool leaving people with empty bags once the crypto market hits another bull run. I could be completely wrong, but right now I just don't see it. But I totally understand why people are on guard when they hear NFT. This game does have a lot of potential and is very clearly in early access. If they can polish the game up, I really think this does have a chance to become another Apex Legends type of game. If you want to jump into off the grid and you're not sure where to start, check out my beginner's guide 10 quick tips to get you started or another one of my videos YouTube thinks you'll like.